I've been fortunate enough to get to design and be part of design teams and I think I know a fair amount about MOI, CG, lots of aspects of the club design. One of the things that's ultra specialized, even within this realm, is aerodynamics. You are truly an expert on that. Talk a little about your background and, and, and how that background feeds great into, into helping golfers every day. So, educated as an aerodynamicist, an aerodynamics engineer from Iowa State University, worked at Boeing for years, and I was in the low speed aerodynamics group on the high speed civil transport. So, I was working on getting lift optimized, drag minimized on like the next generation Concorde. So, I was doing a lot of things with bluff bodies because a supersonic jet isn't necessarily designed for low speed flow. Guess what? A driver is not designed for low speed aerodynamics. It just isn't. It's a big bluff body. So, I've actually talked to my buddies at Boeing, guys at NASA, I'm like, your, your problem of optimizing the feel, the durability, the resilience, ultimately the aerodynamics on a driver is at times far exceeds some of the things we're trying to do with some of the aircraft or spacecraft we're working on. So we have been working with a gentleman at uh, University of California, San Diego, and he has an incredible computational fluid dynamics package, which allows us to simultaneously analyze the aerodynamics on the club from the top of the swing down to impact while it's in motion. Most analytics are done with a club that is not in motion. It's just sitting in one place and the air's flowing over it. We're swinging that club. It makes a huge difference. Allows us to understand the total work required from the top of the swing to impact. We found at about 37% of the way down, drag started to increase and by the time you get to the ball, drag was very high. We developed a, an aerodynamic package which streamlined the club head all the way around the face, all the way back to the trailing edge, added some trips top and bottom, which moved the separation point a little further aft, overall reduced the wake on the club, overall reduced the drag, so now you can get that club head to the ball much faster. So in my experience, one of the things that happens, some small changes, what look like small changes, can have some fairly big aerodynamic results on moving things around and getting things to flow and separate or not separate. So as you're doing things, how do you, how do you make sure that, that those small changes through all of your iterations are always going in the right direction? Because I know sometimes you can make a change and it doesn't have the effect you want. It actually makes things worse. So as you're iterating to get that thing truly optimized, you know, what is the scale, what is the magnitude that you're looking for? And you're exactly right. Aerodynamics is a very nonlinear world. We'll make a little change and think it's got to make it better. It makes it a lot worse. Um, because again, it is very nonlinear. So the answer to your question is testing, testing, testing. We do a lot of analytical work to understand how we believe it's going to work, but then we have to test it. Put it in the robot. Put it in with players. So ultimately we can see what the benefit really is. Because the analytics could tell you one thing, reality could tell you another. We saw the same thing at Boeing. We would put it through wind tunnels, we would do all sorts of analytical work, get it out in flight test, and it just doesn't behave exactly like we thought it was going to. Then you have to adapt. You gotta make some slight changes. Did the same thing as we're developing the driver. So tell me the one thing you think most golfers or maybe have a misconception or just don't understand about aerodynamics in golf clubs. Um, I would say that it doesn't matter. Because most would say, come on, it's a little club head, it's going 100 miles an hour, what's the big deal? And I was that guy just a couple years ago. But we found through a lot of work that it actually does matter. And we can give someone even that fraction of a mile an hour more club head speed, which gives them more ball speed, which gives them more distance. So it actually does matter.